Good morning, Cyber Warriors. Got a pretty complex one here today, and we're going to sit there and work through the processes of being able to make changes to your local security policy through PowerShell and a pair of functions that we found on the internet. And I will include links below uh, to that so you can see what that is, and then we'll go over the different changes that we made to it uh, to make it so it fits better with our scripts. So um, let's get right to it. All right, so here we have local security policy. And this has several elements that we want to modify and manipulate. Some of them we can do through uh, simple net account commands, um, like the maximum password age, the minimum password age, the password length. Uh, but there are a couple of other things that um, can't be done simply through the command line. Uh, but there is a way to do it. Uh, and, and the enforced password history is probably one of the really big ones here, that there's no immediate direct command line option to be able to do these things. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at some command line options that we have available to modify and manipulate something within the local security policy. So here we have a section called secedit, or at least a command or execution we can run called secedit. Uh, this has an export function, which allows us to export to a configuration file that we name specifically from the local security policy. I'm going to run this, and away we go. It's pretty simple, it's very fast, and it provides a detailed information log that we can use it. We can look at it if we want to. We're not necessarily going to take a look at that right now. We are, however, going to take a look at this thing to see what's inside it. So we're going to get content for that. And we have a whole bunch of information, some of which is not very useful. Privilege rights. And these little strings here are user accounts or groups so that uh, it has the idea of who has the ability to make changes or rights to those sections. Uh, the next portion up, we have the registry values, as it's called here, event logs, uh, all of the event auditing that's occurring, occurring which is none because zero means no or disabled. And the next section is the system access, which contains a bunch of things that we are familiar with, like minimum password age, password complexity, lockout attempts, um, being able to uh, have your password stored as a reversible hash. Uh, these are all different things that we can see from the local security policy. Store passwords using reversible encryption. See, this is a zero, and it's disabled. This being disabled is a good thing, because that is a bad way to get yourself compromised. So we can actually make changes to this by entering in Notepad. Bring it up, and we can make a change whatever change we want. Let's change this from 5 days to 15 days for your minimum password age. Let's take a look at the security policy again just to make sure that yes, it was set at 5 days. So let's go ahead and let's make a change. So in order to make a change to this, we're going to use a secedit command to configure your local security policy. And this should be familiar for those of us who have actually done uh, security templates based off of the local security policy. The, you can get far more granular through the poss uh, a security policy, and you absolutely should. You should be creating a template through the local security policy that you can import. Um, 
there are some things here that I think are a bit easier to work with uh, outside of the template because it's easier to configure some of these things based off of a local policy that may be presented in the readme for it during the competition. Um, but this is the command that we would use in order to configure that database without using the GUI, which we can talk about that in another time. But for right now, let's go ahead and configure it based off of the file that we'd already created and modified it. As we can see, this runs very quickly. And once again, it publishes to that log file for you to be able to peruse if you need to. So let's bring up our local security policy and but it still says five days and not 15. Simply trying to hit F5 to refresh isn't fixing it either. And there are no refresh options here for us to view and do. So moving away and then moving back doesn't resolve it. We have to open up a new session. And we do that by SecPaul MSC. And I'm going to have to drag that onto the other screen. Here we go. Account policies, password policy, it now shows our newly configured update. So this is the basic premise of how to make changes to the local security policy. And I would say that you probably only want to do this for the password account lockout area and also for the auditing and the audited policy. We'll go into that in a little bit, but first, I want to show you a way to make this a lot easier to work with. And it's through the use of a pair of functions that can be found on the internet. And I will include a link to that page down below. So here we are in Stack Overflow. And this is where someone has asked a question that I asked myself. How do you enforce the password complexity using PowerShell? Because there's not a good way to do that. You can't use a net accounts command to do that. Um, so how, how do you do that? Well, there is no native means to do it. In fact, the number one answer here says the very same thing. It says use local security policy. But there is a way around it. And this person actually wrote a really good function actually a pair of functions that not only runs those sec edit commands to configure but also and this is this first one is actually it grabs that export file and it compartmentalizes all of it it creates them into new objects so that you can min make changes to those objects and then re-upload them in a very simple and effective way. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So here we are, we have the two functions, parse secpol uh, and also set secpol um, based off of what that was written on that Stack Overflow site. And I have the link here as part of the information in the function, just so that I can refer back to it. Now what it's doing is it's doing the export configuration file a thing that we had done in the previous one or the previous section um, and it's pumping this to out null and what that does is it suppresses that little message which shows the task is completed successfully it, it basically just makes sure we don't see that as part of the output which is fine we don't necessarily need to see and it goes through, it grabs that file that we created, and it's pushing all of these into individual sections that can be used uh, as part of um, an object that we can look at and call. Um, so there's all that is. And the second one is just simply grabbing the information that's there, 
putting it into a configuration file or the means that we have and it's doing the configuration with the sec edit command. So I want to show you this in action uh, because it's kind of cool. All right, let's do that next. So this is actually future killed guy coming in and I'm going to interrupt this video. It's just becoming, it's going to be too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it at this point and we're going to pick up right where I was working before, right? So what did we cover in, in this so far? Uh, we went in, uh, we identified the sec edit commands, what those do, how those interact with the um, security policy and the fact that we can make changes to the security policy. Uh, showed you uh, a pair of functions that were written by a nice gentleman on Stack Overflow, which grabs that file, the configuration file, makes it into something that we can manipulate, and then it re-uploads and reconfigures uh, the security policy, um, and which is what I'm going to cover in in the immediate next video. Um, so if if you got that, go ahead and stay tuned for that. But um, for right now, I I hope you learned something. Happy hunting. And I'll see you in the next video.